everyone, it's Sevi. It's been a long wait, but Yelan is finally out of the chasm to scratch our backs, and I'm really happy to finally be able to share with you my Yelan review and initial guide. After having early access to the hot, sick armpit model Yelan, I can say that she's a yay for me. In this video, I'm going to review Yelan's kit and value, as well as discuss gameplay, building, and team comp tips. Let's get into it. Before talking about her actual talents, know that Yelan's relevant abilities, her charged attack, skill, and burst all scale purely on HP. As a result, it renders attack almost completely useless to her kit. The implications of this will be discussed throughout the video and especially what it means for her build needs. Anyway, Yelan is a Hydro DPS who deals very solid damage and applies Hydro to set up reactions. Her kit can be convenient to use purely for off-field purposes, but it also has room for interesting combos that aspiring players can learn. Let me start with her charged attack and its breakthrough mechanic. Players can actually choose to ignore this completely, but I think it still has merit for trying out. If you're out of combat for 5 seconds, she gets the breakthrough state. You'll notice her wristband glowing, which means the effect is ready. I should emphasize that out of combat means your team should not be in battle. It won't work even if Yelan is not switched in, but you're still in combat. This reduces her charged attack cooldown, in fact, it's almost instantaneously charged and makes it deal AoE Hydro damage. In theory, doing a breakthrough charged attack is good, especially against groups of enemies simply because it's quick AoE damage. It produces an AoE even if the shot hits the ground, so aiming isn't that necessary. You have to level up her normal attack talent to increase its damage, and that's resources spent for a talent that has a somewhat niche purpose. But it's something you can eventually do to cover all bases of her kit, and it'll also be helpful if she's your on-field driver. Basically, use and level this up only if you want to maximize her entire kit rotation. Otherwise, feel free to just ignore it and focus on her skill and burst. Next, how does her skill work? Passing through enemies while it's triggered marks them. Either you press it for instant damage or hold it to move around quickly and mark more enemies to damage. This can be quite helpful for battlefield mobility. When you use the hold version, you also get resistance to interruption, but of course you're still taking damage and reactions still affect you like getting frozen. All enemies marked will simultaneously take Hydro damage when triggered and you'll generate 4 Hydro particles. But note that the Hydro only applies when it's activated, not when you apply the mark. So this actually can be set up for vaporized reactions. I find it actually deals good damage, although because it scales on HP, attack buffs will do nothing to improve it. It also has one more mechanic where each enemy marked will give a 34% chance to reset her breakthrough state if it's on cooldown. So you can charge attack right after using her skill while you're waiting to catch the hydro particles it generates. Finally, her burst has a 70 energy cost. Activating it deals an instance of AoE Hydro damage, and you summon a dice that deals coordinated attacks every second with the active character's normal attacks. It fires three projectiles at a time to deal damage and apply Hydro. It can also proc if you trigger her skill damage. Essentially, it's very similar to Sing Cho's burst. This is where Yelan's main damage source and Hydro application utility comes from, making it the most important part of her kit. Prioritize the burst talent for leveling up. Follow with a skill level, then level up her normal attack talent depending on your usage. Mentioning her passive talents, the first one gives her additional HP depending on how many different elements are in the team. In effect, this improves her damage and tankiness. The second is a nice buff wherein if your burst is ongoing, then the active character will get an increase in damage every second until the burst ends. This gives Yelan a nice added damage buffing utility. Alright, now that you're familiar with her kit, it's hard not to compare her with Sing Cho. If you expected to finally have another Sing Cho type character, then it is pretty close. Which is actually a good thing, mainly because Sing Cho has always been such a reliable and in demand Hydro character. Most notably, if you've always wanted to have two Sing Chos to put on both Spiral Abyss sides, then here's a way to finally do so. While she has her own things that separate her from Sing Cho, she's also lacking some things that Sing Cho does. First, Sing Cho potentially has more Hydro application versus Yelan, particularly in melee combat. 
This is because Sing Cho has both burst and the rain swords applying hydro, which are two sources, while Ye Lan only has her burst as her off field hydro application. Next, Ye Lan has no team survival utility compared to Sing Cho, who adds resistance to interruption and healing to your team. Ye Lan does have high HP, so in a sense, she can act as a tank. However, Ye Lan has easily higher damage potential than Sing Cho, which I guess is the trade off for not having those support utilities. More so, she's a better on field driver than Sing Cho due to her fast attacks and very tanky nature. They have very similar functions, so when deciding which one will fit a specific team you want, just weigh their separate pros and cons. Let's quickly take a look at Yelan's constellations, but a quick disclaimer that I didn't get to try these out for myself, so this is a theoretical analysis of what they add to her kit. C1 gives Yelan's skill an additional charge. This can be useful in quickly inserting an extra press skill for some fast additional particle generation. C2 gives Yelan's burst an additional hydro hit every 1.8 seconds. What this potentially adds is another source of hydro for your pyro characters to reverse vape on as long as it doesn't share ICD with Yelan's other burst hits. C3 gives her burst 3 extra levels which is a good damage bump. C4 adds HP% percent to all your party members based on how many enemies Yelan marks with her lifeline at a maximum of 40% HP, and as long as you use Yelan's skill at least once in a rotation, it should have a 100% uptime. This will help teammates' survivability and any HP scaling utility they may have, but it will also buff Yelan's own damage significantly. C5 is another damage bump, giving 3 talent levels to her skill. And then C6 allows Yelan to quickly fire breakthrough arrows without charging them. She'll only be able to do this during her burst and is limited to 5 arrows within 20 seconds, but it essentially gives Yelan some small on-field nukes. This is probably the sort of thing you could use for speedrunning battles with big forward vapes. Now let's move on to building her. As stated in the beginning, Yelan is an HP scaling DPS whose attack stat is almost entirely irrelevant. Effects that increase attack, whether from artifacts, weapons, or other characters, are completely useless to her. She's also heavily reliant on her burst to do her job, making energy another concern. So what are the specific considerations when building her? Two main questions I foresee are, one, how much ER will she need? And two, do we use an HP or ER sands? Her ER stats can vary, but for a very safe range, 180-200% to is enough, or more than enough for almost all combat scenarios. While it might look very high, this can easily be accomplished through a combination of ER sands, ER substats, a two-piece ER artifact, or an ER weapon, particularly the Favonius Warbo, which gives 60% ER at max level. However, this can potentially be lowered to 140-160% to if you are using other Favonius holders in the team and or have high particle generators. I highly recommend using an ER Sans if you can't meet the ER target due to lacking substats or not using an ER weapon. However, if you have enough ER from substat and weapon sources, then you could instead use an HP Sans. Tweak it according to your experience and needs. Essentially, much of her offensive and team utility is in her burst, so ensure first that you can get it up consistently. While you generally want a crit circlet, you can run her with an HP circlet too, ideally with HP substats. HP returns on her don't diminish as quickly as attack would on conventional attack scaling characters, which is a nice added convenience for building her. Then, for the goblet, you obviously want hydro damage, which will do much more damage than an HP goblet. As for substats, crit, HP, and ER are what you're looking for. Target a nice 1 to 2 ratio or as close as possible for your crit stats. But you don't need to worry too much on stacking crit either since HP and crit have very similar weight in increasing her DPS and since she ascends crit rate anyway. Artifact sets are also pretty straightforward. Her top two artifact sets are the four-piece emblem, which gives her best personal damage and helps a lot in addressing ER needs, and the four-piece noblesse, which is best for improving team damage, though take note that the four-piece attack buff has no benefit on her. Then you have two-piece combos of tenacity, emblem, noblesse, heart of depth for budget options if you don't want to or haven't finished farming for a complete set. 
then it's worth mentioning that 4 star sets like Instructor for the EM buff or Exile for the added energy quality of life are also viable options but you'll eventually want to upgrade to 5-star artifacts to better increase her own personal damage. Now onto weapons, and Yelan opens up some interesting possibilities. Since base attack does not matter to Yelan, 3-star weapons with low base attack but good substats are actually very workable on her. For instance, she now becomes the top recurve bow user, which provides over 40% HP substats at max level. Then you also have the Slingshot and Sharpshooter's Oath, which provide crit stats. These 3-star weapons are actually not bad on her and are cheap but effective options. Moving to 4-star options, the top recommended bow is the Favonius War Bow, which everyone gets a free copy of. Its biggest strength is how it helps a lot with her ER needs while also helping battery the entire team. With Fav, you'll barely be in need of ER substats, especially if you're already using a two-piece emblem. The upcoming free-to-play bow, Fading Twilight, is another potential ER weapon. Though compared to Favonius Warbow, it only gives 30% ER and has no support utility, but at least it provides a nice damage bonus at max refinement. The Sacrificial Bow is the last ER weapon, but you can still use her skill twice in a rotation without the cooldown reset effect anyway, and Favonius is overall easier and better to use. Stringless is another good option, especially at high refinements. And the thing is, you're mainly after its damage bonus, which doesn't change, so you technically don't even have to level it up. Though if you do level it up, then she gets more EM, which will be most useful on a taser team. The Viridescent Hunt, if you're a battle pass buyer, is also a good option for helping build her crit stats, and its triggered effect, which can be procced by charge shots, adds some nice battle utility. Finally, for 5-star weapons, the best choices are her signature bow, Aqua Simulacra, which is her highest damage ceiling weapon, and the Elegy for the End, which is her best team support weapon. Either of these will perform very well and look good on her. Finally, let's talk about her team value and comps. As an off-field Hydro DPS and Applier, which is like another Sing Cho, she can be quite valuable with many team comp options. There are still teams where simply using Sing Cho or even Kakomi will offer more comfort, but Yelan's contribution as an addition to the Hydro roster is very welcome nonetheless. I'll have another video with more details about her teams, but for now, here's a quick overview of your popular options. Paired with a Pyro character, Yelan will enable them to do reverse vapes, making her another good addition to vape teams. Though one caveat I noticed is that, in comparison to Sing Cho, who has more Hydro application in close range, there's some risk that your Pyro DPS will overtake Yelan's Hydro application if they apply Pyro too much or if other elements react with the Hydro aura. Hu Tao is one such example, and I noticed that at some point, Yelan's Hydro application couldn't keep up due to Hu Tao's attacks and Blossom both applying Pyro. A national vape variation where she replaces Sing Cho is also possible, but it again runs into the potential issue of not having enough Hydro application. This can be remedied by having Kazuha or Sucrose infuse their bursts with Hydro to increase Hydro application. Or with all the Pyro around, Yelan might start forward vaping. If all your party members, including Yelan, are at high investment, it won't matter much who's vaping anyway. Yelan is also another addition to Freeze teams. Here, the team relies a lot on her burst uptime to set up Freeze reactions, so she'll need ample ER and a Favonius user on the team, whether it's herself or another teammate. As long as you fulfill her energy needs, you'll have a very chill time. It's worth noting that, unfortunately, she doesn't synergize with Ganyu due to Ganyu's charged attack playstyle. Then, in a taser team, Yelan can actually function as the on-field driver for herself, Fischl, and Beidou's abilities since she's quite tanky and has fast normal attacks. And if she's equipped with a Favonius Warbow, she can consistently generate white particles during her field time. Or you can just make her the Hydro Applier and drive with Sucrose who is more conventional for swirling and spreading elements. 
Lastly, if you had any concerns that Raiden's burst state wouldn't be able to proc Yelan's burst, worry not. They work perfectly fine together and Raiden definitely helps with Yelan's energy as well. Putting them together means more offensive stats for Yelan. All in all, these are popular team templates that she works well in, but of course she can work in many other teams. Generally speaking, whatever comps you have in mind, the most important thing is to ensure that her energy needs are addressed. To reiterate my thoughts, Yelan has a lot of overlapping utility with Sing Cho, so if you found yourself needing Sing Cho for both spiral teams, now you have Yelan. For me, she doesn't disappoint in terms of gameplay fun and even her DPS potential. On her burst and skill, her damage, even on 3-star weapons, is nothing to frown at. She again, as a Hydro character, has several team templates to work with already. While your main concern for her is ER, she at least has weapon and artifact options which will easily address that. And she's less frustrating to build since HP and crit substats have similar weight in her DPS increase and now you have someone to dump all your HP stuff on. I'm overall pretty happy with her as she's pretty much everything I expected her to be. On top of being a gorgeous character, she's a solid addition to our growing Hydro roster. If you're hoping to pull Yelan, I'm manifesting some gotcha luck for you. If you already pulled her, I would love to hear your thoughts on her in the comments and how you plan to build and comp her. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!